Hey, it's James here from MatchFit and I'm back with another quick lesson to give you some tips to implement into your training to get better results out of your out of the training efforts and the training time that you're already putting in. Um, now, in this quick lesson, I'm going to give you some tips on how to improve yourself physically to change direction quicker. I've, sp- I've previously spoken about agility and how that combines um, good reaction times with your ability to change direction well. Now I'm going to talk about what sort of training you can actually do to improve um, how quickly you can change direction. Okay, now, first thing to note is that, um, like with a lot of stuff in football strength and conditioning, the answer isn't really black and white. It's, it depends on the context and it lies, the answer is really in the grey areas. It can change from situation to situation what the right strategy and right thing is to do. So with this, it, the really the ideal is that we take a more of a holistic approach. So rather than looking for one type of training, which is going to improve your change of direction ability. You need to think about what different training methods can we bring together uh, and what might you need right now, which is going to have the best positive impact in terms of your change of direction speed. Okay, now there's been um, certain studies done on this, looking at different training strategies, but it's important to note that whenever we're talking about research or, um, or different studies which are done, there's never any better research than research or studies that you do on yourself. Okay, so that is going to give you the best insight into what works for you and your, your, your body type and what you need right now. So anything that I'm about to, to suggest, I recommend that you, you test it out on yourself and you measure your results and see what works and, and, and what doesn't. And what the best, um, the best thing for you to focus on is to get the most bang for your buck. I say that term a lot, but... Uh, it's important that you get the the most the best results out of the time that you're putting in um, so that you're not wasting your energy when you could be focusing on things which are going to have a bigger impact on your game so there's a number of different strategies which have been tested in terms of improving change of direction obviously out on the football pitch it's important that you're able to change direction um, well and quickly to have more chance of getting on the ball in 50 50 situations evading opponents things like that um, so the first thing I'm going to address is your traditional traditional um, strength training. So I'm talking about things like your back squats, your deadlifts, um, exercises which are compound lifts, which are you know not really done explosively. You're just lifting a fairly heavy weight and you're trying to improve your strength. How does that affect your change of direction ability? Well, the studies have shown that the impact on your ability to change direction quicker is actually it's pretty much non-existent when it comes to your normal strength training. It's down to a number of different reasons, um, but it really ties back down to how specific the exercises you're doing are to how the, um, the action looks. So when we're changing direction, obviously we're decelerating, we're getting low, and then we're exploding and accelerating out at an angle into a different direction. So I guess the closer your exercises can look to mimicking the movements which occur in that. So if you imagine yourself changing direction and and just visualize it in slow motion, what is your body doing in that action? How are your muscles contracting? Um, Then if we can get as close to that as possible, then that's going to have an add a bit of an overload. That's going to have the best carryover. So things such as just, you know, a normal barbell back squat, but have limited carryover onto helping your change of direction um, quickness. But then if we look at something like a jump squat, so you can do that with a barbell, for example, where you're you're doing like a counter movement and then you're exploding upwards and then you're landing and then you're exploding upwards again. That has slightly better carryover because you've got that um, eccentric movement. So when you're absorbing the landing, your muscles are lengthening and this is what we see when you're going into a into a turn. You're decelerating and your muscles are lengthening. So that's called an eccentric muscle contraction when your muscles are lengthening. And that's what helps you to decelerate, put the brakes on, and then slow yourself down to change direction and change the angle that you're running. We've got that element in a jump squat. And then that's followed by a quick concentric contraction because you're going to be jumping and taking off again, which mimics that when you've decelerated and then you're accelerating again out into a different direction. So it's mimicking that. But again, the carryover is limited with that. And the reason for that is, is that um, how it's not as specific as it could be is because it's it's in a vertical plane. So when you're doing a squat jump, you're jumping up and down. But when you're um, changing direction, obviously you're moving left to right or, or even back on yourself sometimes. 
So the carryover is still limited, which then leads me on to my to the to the other training strategy which has been researched in terms of this, and that's plyometric training. And plyometric training has been found to be actually really effective in terms of helping you change the direction of ability. Um, and it also it helps that ground contact time and being able to produce force quickly. And that, that helps in terms of when we're changing direction, um, you're decelerating and you, you're really punching your foot into the ground to then push off and change direction quickly. And that's what a plyometric exercise is gonna mimic. And if you can do things, you can, you can actually do exercises which mimic that movement even closer. So instead of doing, for example, hops on the spot, you could do side hops. So you could do hops side to side and then you're getting that foot angle on impact, which is actually going to look very similar to the foot angle that you'd have when you're changing that direction out on the pitch. Um, so that's a good strategy. But again, there are positives and negatives to each strategy, which is why it's best to look for an, over, an overall holistic approach here. And that is that when you're out football training or, or training with your team, training by yourself on the pitch or in a match, you're actually already doing many many um, plyometric movements so you're already getting that under your belt and it's already very specific to what you're trying to improve so if you do even more plyometrics in your own training time is that the best use of your time is simply adding more plyometrics going to give you the best results and in the studies that have been done again there's there's drawbacks in terms of we don't know um, the schedule of the players that are involved in the study so we don't know what their workload is for the week. We don't know what their body mass is like. So as the as the studies go on, we don't know. We, the researchers didn't have control over um, knowing how the, the athletes' body fat percentages have changed, which could affect results as well. So that's why, again, I'm just reiterating that there's always drawbacks with studies and the best research is the research done in yourself. But I'm just questioning in terms of plyometric training. Is that the best bang for your buck for your time simply doing more plyometrics and you're already doing a load with your team just being out playing football on the pitch also you're going to create such an overload that you risk injuring yourself because you're going to put too much stress um, on your ligaments and tendons from the plyometrics um, so just something to think about there and the, the next strategy which could be used is eccentric training and this is the the method which has the i guess the the strongest correlation in terms of helping you improve your change of direction ability so as i mentioned the eccentric muscle contractions are when your muscles are lengthening and that really comes into play when you're decelerating so um, interestingly the quickest players are normally in terms of agility and change of direction are the ones that can decelerate the fastest okay so if you can improve your deceleration that's going to really help you change direction quicker even if you improve nothing else if you can stop and put on the brakes quicker then you're going to be able to start the change of direction quicker and this for a lot of players is the area that they find they get the best results for in terms of um, training for quicker change of direction is focusing on the eccentric side of their training um, but again you want to be able to try and do this in a way which mimics the movement um, of changing direction side to side um, so just again something to think about there always try and be um, specific and think what does the movement like, look like out on the pitch how can I mimic that and add a bit of an overload? And a common or very popular um, piece of equipment that you, you probably see many pros using is something called the yo-yo machine where you've got a belt strapped around you and you've got that weight forcing you down towards the, the platform that they're standing on and then they're trying to burst back up to the standing position but it's constantly dragging them back down. And on the way down, they're having to control that their, their bodies on the way down and that is really testing their... Um, eccentric strength and, and adding, adding an overload to that so that's a very popular exercise we've also got exercises such as um, single leg deadlifts where you keep one of your legs straight and obviously you're deadlifting you can do that with you could do it with a barbell you could do it with dumbbells you could even do it with your body weight so that's when um, the hamstring is is lengthening um, and it's also a good test of stability as well um, which is another thing we want to try and add in if we can be more stable at the ankle and the knee uh, the lower back and the hips then that's going to help you preserve more energy and put that energy uh, and force into into the change of direction which is going to help you um, be quicker if you can apply it quickly to the ground as well and there's lots of different training strategies really 
that you can implement to this and there's not really a recipe to follow one size fits all it really comes down to uh, your your own or your coach's imagination what they feel fits best together you know there's there's millions of different exercises out there and a lot of players look for the, the you know the magic exercise where it actually comes down to more like the program how are the exercises put together are they done at the right time are they done at the right speed how um, how the muscle contractions how do they compare to the muscle contractions that occur in the movement you're trying to improve all these things to think about so you might not even go into the gym you you could go into a sand pit and um, do some change of direction training um, in the sand which is going to add an overload and it's going to um, you know add an overload eccentrically and concentrically as well it's going to have a good carryover um, onto the pitch when you're trying to change direction so you can use services like that as well which is just again to reiterate the fact that there's not one size fits all with this it's down to um, imagination there's so many different things you can implement but you want to try and implement the things which are going to you know have the biggest impact on your game so if for example you're noticing that um, your eccentric strength is poor but your actual movement mechanics are very good then focus on that eccentric uh, straight uh, that eccentric strength training and then that's going to help you change direction quicker um, so just some things to think about there hope i've explained that that clearly um, but just really to get the point over that that context is is key um, and just try and focus on your training time on try and pick the things which are going to give you the most bang for your buck if you've got a really unstable ankle but you're doing eccentric training to try and improve your changes direction then you're focusing on the wrong thing you need to stabilize your ankle stiffen up that ankle first that's going to give you you know the best um the, the best results for your for your training time so with this sort of thing try and look for a holistic approach um it's not black and white there isn't just one training strategy it's normally a, a lot of things coming together we've also got to think about what i was talking about um your strength training in terms of exercises like the back squat where you're just moving vertically obviously in a, in a season you're not only going to be working on change of direction you also want to get better at your jumping height your your strength in term in terms of your injury resilience as well so there's a ton of different things to work on if you for a period of time just want to focus on changes direction um, then obviously that's fine but you've also got to take into account what is my priority right now um, and also think about what stage of the season you're in as well but to, to, to sort of cap it off um, on top of all of this we've got to think about injury prevention so if your eccentric strength is getting much better um, but you're actually not strong enough to absorb forces safely time and time and time again then eventually it might lead to an injury so in that situation you might think or it might be appropriate that you actually work on um, developing your strength further first so that you can for example um, squat one and a half times your body weight and once you know you can do that safely then you know you've got a good level of strength and you can really attack those decelerations out in your training um, when you're trying to change direction so um Hopefully you've got some some good insights and some good tips from uh, from this quick lesson. Um, if you need, if you'd like any help implementing this, then again I've added some uh, some links below of some options to to do that to get our help with this and get our guidance with this. Because um, ultimately the the players at the top clubs are already getting guided on all of this stuff, which is why they're such phenomenal athletes because they've got the strength and conditioning coaches and the sports scientists working there with their schedules doing the right things at the right time and that's why it's, it's tough a lot of the time for for players to step up to pro level they might already play be playing at a good level but to really make that step up to the highest level you've got to be training now like you would be when you're playing at that playing at the level um because the the gap is just going to get wider and wider and wider and you know a lot of the time it doesn't even come down to your technical ability in the ball it's your ability to actually keep up with the game get on the ball and remain injury free as well and that's where you know the physical side really comes in into play um so yeah if you got some value from this um then brilliant hope you enjoyed it please share it with a teammate or one of your coaches if you think this is going to help 
um, with planning their training too. And uh, thanks for watching and listening and I will catch you in the next one.